from brutal offshore drilling platforms all the way to the homeowner and hobbyist, Lincoln Electric's 125 years of experience provides the quality you need. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Lincoln Electric. Whether your project vehicle is brand new or 50 years old, Napa will have the parts and tools you need to get the job done. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. No hesitation. Welcome back to another episode of the Newfoundland Hobbyist. I really appreciate having you here. Today we're going to dive into a really exciting hobby, one that I'd like to share with you all. It's one that I've had for a long time and it's one that's fairly easy to get into, holds some history and uh, it's just really fun, exciting world and that is the world of straight razors. Now in case you're young enough or removed enough from it that you don't know what a straight razor is, I'm going to show you here. This is uh, a beloved one of mine. I've just pulled a couple out of my collection here. This is the only brand new straight razor I have. And it was a gift from my parents when I graduated university. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? And now as I open it up, some of you are saying, ah, I know now what he's talking about. A straight razor. A lot of people, I really don't like uh, this term, and people in the straight razor community really hate this term, but <laughs> a lot of people call them cutthroat razors, which is an improper name for them. It's not what they're called. That is what sometimes they're nicknamed as. Now, to just begin, razors have so much about them. They seem relatively simple when you look at them, but there are so many different things to learn and they involve a lot of different hobbies, which we'll get into. First off, what you have right here, the steel here, this is the blade, of course, and this is the entirety of the blade or the primary part of the straight razor. This is the handle. A lot of people would call this the handle, but it's not, you don't hold this. This is simply an edge cover to protect your edge in storage or transportation when you're throwing them because straight razors have extremely delicate edges. You can't do any uh, funny business or, or be rough with a straight razor edge. You will ruin the edge for the shave. But this is simply the scale or the edge cover. We usually call them scales. A two-part construction pinned at the front and the back here. We have a wedge here because you see it has to go from closed to open the width of the tang. And then it has to close back here because this is where your straight razor blade wedges in. Let's take a look what's in this box. <coughs> look at this. Maybe it doesn't look real special to you right now, but this is special. So this is a collection of old razors, quite old, vintage, antique. All of these are several decades old at the least. Some of them are broken up as you can see here. They're all in, in somewhat trashy condition. All the scales are mostly broken. I don't know if there's a single one in the lot that's uh, that's in good condition in terms of scales. But even so, I do not like these old uh, bamboo style scales, these old Bakelite material scales. They're just, they get really brittle and they look pretty ugly in my opinion. What's far more interesting is what's inside the scales because we can and will be replacing that. But we have a bunch of razors here and as long as razors like this aren't largely chipped or very warped out of shape or too rusted to be resharpened, then they can be refurbished, they can be rescaled, and they can be used for decades more. That's the beautiful thing about straight razors like this, is they last lifetimes, generations. I think today we'll work on restoring this old German razor right here. I don't have a lot of information on it. Tank Hardware Company, Quincy JLL, made in Germany. 
Maybe some of you will know something. 60 Wellington. I chose this one. I love this little collar put in around here. See how that's stamped in? Just a little decorative piece. This, um, the, the tang on this razor is also gym pinged or textured on both the top and bottom, which often signified a slightly higher end razor because of course a lot more machining to mill both sides of the razor and that just gives you a little more purchase, a little more traction as you hold on there. So the first step is to disassemble the razor and you notice it has a brass pin that's pinned on two washers here. It's the only thing holding this together. My next step is to strip off the very rough grime and dirt on this so that we can handle it a little more cleanly to start working on our scales. I'll use a wire wheel and a bench grinder. It works really well for stripping that old dirt and grime off of our steel. There we go, now that's been scrubbed with my Corsus wheel, my Corsus compound. So that's stripped off a lot of the tarnish and, and old junk on there after that wire wheel. You can really see those words there now, just beautiful. We'll get a, a better polish with probably a rouge when we get closer to being done, but for right now, we want to focus on some scales, getting some scales cut and start shaping down for this. Oh, that look pretty. Even there already, it's uh, encouraging and Brings a little bit of joy. Now for scales, I've chosen this piece of Spectrobly. Like a green mountain camo, I believe is the color of this. It's just a scrap piece left from a knife making project. But you can see, these are normally in flat layers, but I took a thicker piece some time ago and I ground it askew. So that even on a thin piece of material, you're able to see all the layer colors. You see how I've done the run out like that? Something handy for you guys to remember when you're doing projects of your own. A way to get away with that if you're using Spectraply. But I see we have just enough here to squeeze out a couple scales. And if we can make this work, this is a really beautiful material. I think it'll look really nice. So what I'm going to do first, just rough trace our two scales. We're definitely not going to do them this, uh, this wonky bamboo shape. But... We need to do that to start. As a custom knife maker and craftsman, sharpening has become a part of my daily routine. I use paulsfinest.com for all of my sharpening equipment. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul's Finest. Whether I'm in the workshop or out on the trails, Wild Med Kits provides me with the equipment I need to stay prepared. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by wildmedkits.ca. Another quick tip, if you're copying a couple pieces, trying to get a couple pieces closely alike, is to stick them together before you shape them. And the stuff to do that with is called cyanoacrylate. If you have an accelerator like this, this is a Starbond product, really excellent product, but just a couple dabs. And the glue is somewhat brittle, so you will be able to separate it later. Bit of activator there. There we go, they're stuck now. See, I'm just holding one. We can go ahead and, uh, and work out two pieces that look identical. When we separate them, we'll have it.
So here's what we have, two scales. I have them centered on this drill bit here. Look at our little wedge. And then this will be peened down. And do you see this bow here? That's exactly what we want because we want our blade to cleanly sit down in here. You don't want it bumping on the sides because as we talked about before, uh, straight razor's edges are very delicate. So we want to do a nice job here. Doesn't that brass wedge look so pretty? Let's go ahead and give it a little buff then we'll get on to the next stage. And here's how it looks now. Look at that gloss. There's no varnish or anything on there. That's just the gloss that the material takes on. Isn't that beautiful? And then, of course, that was enough to polish the soft material like brass. So we have a beautifully finished scale here. We'll peen this after the razor is completely done. Here's my tickle trunk, full of beautiful, beautiful wet stones. Here's the stone we want to start with right here. For the beginner and advanced sharpener, the Edge Pro Sharpening System makes it easier for you to get razor sharp edges every time. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Edge Pro Inc. Simmons Tire supplies all the wheels, tires, and accessories you need for everything from ATVs and cars to heavy equipment and machinery. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Simmons Tire. But straight razors require a whole separate skill set, and it's one that I haven't mastered, but I do manage to sharpen my own straight razors and have for years now. So I've achieved that level. Straight razors actually have their own bevel guide, which might confuse you, uh, might make you think that it's easy to sharpen, but they're not easy to get perfect. What you want to do is lay your razor on this bevel guide right here. So when you lay the razor, the spine down, it's going to sit edge on the stone, and there will be a scoop, of course it's a hollow grind, so the whole flat of the razor is not touching the stone, just the point back here near the spine and right here at the edge. You can use that to sharpen. Thankfully, we don't have any major chips or anything in this edge. It's very important to be uh, conscious when you're sharpening straight razors. You need every step perfect. You need to put pressure on the right parts of the blade. Not too much pressure, not too little pressure. Onto a slightly higher grit stone, a 340. This is a ceramic Kuramaku Blue Black. To have your straight razors maintain and sharpen properly, it requires a substantial tool set because you need good stones, you need quite a few stones, and in, as a general rule, the higher grit the stone is, the more expensive it is. The low grit stones like this here, even up to 1,000 grit, are pretty affordable. They're your bread and butter, your basic stones. When you start getting up into the 10,000 grit range, then the price really goes up and you can be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for stones for some of them. 1000 ceramic, Shapton glass. We'll start with back and forth strokes. Switch to single cutting strokes only. That's our goal. So we'll start off right here. 2000 grit, Hayotoshi. Look at the incredible thickness of this stone. We 
just finished with five. Now we're going on to this 8,000. We're going to try a 10,000 Nanawa Professional. And I think it might be a better choice here. Yeah, that's got a little better feel for it, for this razor. You want silky smooth, as refined as possible. Okay, here we go. Before we completely finish our edge here now with stropping, maybe even a final few passes on the stone, we're going to assemble the uh, assemble the knife, the razor, into the scales here. This might be a tough one to show you guys because all the components are so small here, but we'll do our best. A pin, along with a small brass washer. Gamma. Then our razor, our washer. Now let's close. There we go. Another very small washer here on the outside. Now our hammer to start the peening process. <laughs> this is a, a pretty finicky part of the process here. Now here's where you peen until you have the set tension that you want. And with near perfect results, this is exactly how it's supposed to go. So we have peened front and rear of the scales. Look at that fit up. This is not supposed to go bar tight there, but Look at that fit up, that brass wedge. Look at that fit. If we go in underneath here, we have probably 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch of scale material before we reach the blade. So the blade is right up, the edge is way up in here. This sits perfect, just how we want it. We want this to be closed enough for this to cleanly rest. Otherwise, if it's too loose, if this fit up's too loose, our edge can protrude in the bottom and you still have no protection. And our centering here just turned out beautifully. Sometimes they bind, they draw to one side or the other, so when you close them like this, they actually grab the scale, so you have to close them by prying to one side or the other to make sure that it falls perfectly centered in place. And now for the part you're probably almost familiar with with straight razors and that is the stropping. This is the part you see on the old movies and probably a lot of you watching have seen your grandfathers do it or most commonly seen in barber shops that stropping. And this is something that a straight razor user will do every time before a shave. Some passes on a good quality leather, piece of leather. This is just a nice finished leather piece here. Um, that will help keep your edge refined for a lot of shaves. The stones alone won't give you quite the finish. It will almost get you there, but it won't give you that perfectly smooth finish you're looking for. You need to finish with strapping. Like I said, you keep a strap like this in the bathroom, each time before you go to grab your shave, you give a few passes. This is a fresh edge, full brand new edge reestablished. So a lot more passes right now than would be normal. But what's normal, I know a lot of people will give 50 passes. So up one side, back the other side, being one pass. 
two, three, four, five, six, fifty passes before a shave. That's not uncommon, that's pretty common practice to keep your edge nice and smooth because who doesn't want a good smooth shave? Now I had to borrow someone else's hair for this part of the project. At this point I just can't afford it. Do you see that? This is very difficult to show on camera. Do you see that? A hair. And this is fairly fine hair too. Will just fall off under its own weight. And that's what you expect there. I hope I hope that's translating for you all. There, that's whittling, when you can split a hair down, down the middle. Cam. Yeah, there we go. We whittled that one. And we've completed another project in our shop. I think this one will go in on the, the vanity and will serve us for tomorrow's shave. So that'll be exciting there. As you can probably tell from this episode, straight razors invoke a lot of different hobbies. Some people want to get into straight razors just for the collecting. They have no, no interest whatsoever in using them and shaving with them. A lot of people are afraid of them, but they can be shaved with very safely as people use them for hundreds of years. Of course they can be used safely, just with the proper techniques and care. But some people just like collecting them. If you want to get into collecting them, hunting for them in antique stores, just to refurbish them. It's a beautiful hobby, very relaxing. You can do without a lot of different tools and a big tool set. I, I did a lot just in a spare bedroom in my house back in the day. I used to hunt for these. I would not pass an antique shop here on the island stopping in and hunting and see if they had any old razors and I did find plenty that way as well. Sharpening, of course this, this calls for a very high level, very skillful level of sharpening which just brings another hobby and there's just so many hobbies that are brought in with just something like straight razors. So I hope I inspired you to pick something up new and if you have one laying around in the drawer like I know a lot of you do you have an old one belonging to a grandfather or an uncle or one you didn't know where it came from just sitting in a drawer, go ahead and shoot me an email and uh, I'll take it off your hands. Or go ahead and get into restoring it yourself and bringing it back to usable condition. I think you owe it to the razor. Thanks so much for watching. A big shout out to my sponsors. If you can support them, please do they help make this show possible. As always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyists.